I've been riding the updated giant Power Pro Power Meter, the MY20 or 2020 edition for a few months now. It's the same underlying design as the previous edition that did come on my giant TCR, but this one is super discreet. Let's have a look at the promo video Giant have put up over on their website. This new version of the Power Pro Power Meter comes on 24 models in the giant range for 2020, or it can be purchased aftermarket for around $849 approximately, give or take based on the market you're in. That's US dollars too. Diving into the technical specifications, very similar to the previous model, except that design, which is super hidden away. So it's a Shimano based crankset. This one I have is an Altegra R8000 172.5mm, gives you left, right independent measurement and combined measurement to give you total power. It's a rechargeable battery with a life of around 100 hours, the wireless transmission, Ant Plus and Bluetooth Smart. Power accuracy claimed plus or minus 2%. Weight wise adds 16 grams either side. You really won't notice it. Power measurement range between zero and 3000 watts, probably twice as many watts as I could ever do. Um, the cadence range between 20 and 180 RPM, accelerometer based, so no frame magnets required. Water resistance level IPX7, operating environment temperature negative 10 to plus 50. Uh, USB charging cable with a proprietary end connector, and it's different to the previous models as well. So do watch that. If you're traveling with this, you will want to take that cable with you. The unit is firmware upgradable via the RideLink app from Giant, and it has LED light status indicators. If you recall the 2019 model of the Power Pro, you may notice a big power drop here from a claim to 150 hours life down to 100 hours life. But I did some testing with a rig in the garage here with the uh, pedals moving non-stop and the previous version I only got 114 hours of battery life out of the previous version. So 100 hours probably isn't a big change, probably brings things more into line with the real world usage. So 100 hours, remembering pedal based power meters are around 60 hours to 40 hours, so that's not too bad. Speaking of battery life, a recent firmware update has addressed a battery drain issue that I encountered and reported back to Giant. So they're on top of things. I've been running that for a few weeks and everything is A-OK. -okay. So a good reason to keep updated with your firmwares. The majority of the data that I've collected over the last few months from the PowerPro MY20 has been via Ant Plus direct to head units or to my Windows 10 machine indoors on Zwift. It will also connect to Apple TV over Bluetooth and you'll get power and cadence so you can ride on. Similar to the previous version of this power meter, there's no torque effectiveness or pedal smoothness or cycling dynamics. It is, however, within their own app if you connect via Bluetooth. So if you use the RideLink app over Bluetooth, you're pedaling away, it'll give you those metrics. It just doesn't come over Ant Plus to head units when you're out in the road or obviously indoors. The metrics are there. I'd like to see those inserted over Ant Plus as well. Whether we use them or not doesn't really matter. I'd still like to see them recorded. Diving into some of the data sets here, over on my favorite website, DC Rainmaker's analysis tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how they stack up. So three data sets to look at, we'll just dive through them nice and quickly. Here we have an outdoor ride, we have the Giant Power Pro MY20 on a hilly loop up against the Asioma Duos, which we know are pretty reliable. Uh, numbers here look pretty good, let's dive into a few little sections here, so just at the start, tracking pretty well, 251, 254, within a few watts for a few minutes at the start. Um, a little sprint here. Uh, the peaks on the Asioma Duo is a little higher by around 50 watts or so, but still not too far out there. And then nearing the end of the ride, another short little hill here, and 281 versus 280 within one watt there for around three and a half minutes. That's looking pretty good outdoors. Now over to some control tests indoors in the Llama Lab. This one's just a riding along test. Uh, we'll grab a quick look here. This is the Asioma Duo's Power Pro 
2020 and the kicker core. Looking at this section here, so 209, 204, 209. So the kicker core and the Asiomas line up okay. Power Pro reading a little bit lower. Shimano crankset indoors. Scrolling down to the left, right, the Asioma Duos 102, 106, which I trust a lot. 102, 100 on the Power Pro. So the right side's reading a little bit lower. But the true test is the Llama Lab test where things get shaken down. Okay, so standard Llama Lab test here into a short version of the Llama Lab test. I was doing multiple ones of these, so cramming them in. The Neo doesn't really require a warm up. Things were steady in the environment that they were in, so shorten things down. And all looks pretty good. So warm up through here, into 200 watt steady state, into 250 watt steady state, and then into some sprints. So selecting this one here, all is looking pretty good. And this is very surprising for Shimano left, right power meter indoor. So Asioma Duo is 235, Neo 233, Power Pro 234. Devil's in the details. Let's scroll down looking at the left and right. And we can see here the left on the Asioma and the right on the Asioma, 116 versus 116. On the giant, yeah, and here's where it just separates a little. The left is a little inflated at 120 and the right is low. Yes, we know the right reads low on the these type of power meters. 112. So overall, pretty cool, but just a little fudged this way and the right just does what the right does. But overall, it's actually not too bad. I was quite impressed. Into the overs and unders, the 150, 350, 150, 350, 150, 450, you know how it goes, it's the Llama Lab test, uh, 269, 267, 267, all looking pretty good there. Again, devil's in the details. We'll scroll down and we can see one just dagging a little bit there. You can see the purple line. If you've got the eye for detail there, and there's no question about what that one is, it's the right side on the Shimano crankset being a little low there. So 202 there, and you can see it dagging a little bit through there, but look, I've got to say, overall, even though it fudges up on one side and it just does the right thing, that's not bad. That really isn't too bad. So in summary, the previous model of the Giant Power Pro was one of the best performing Shimano left-right power meters that I looked at in my comprehensive report of the issues faced when using that crankset as a power meter. The MY20 version matches that, it's on par with that, if not a little better. But yes, look, I'm not trying to get around the fact that it does still suffer from that left-right issue of these Shimano cranksets. It's just one of the better ones. It doesn't suffer as bad. So is the new power probe a great power meter? I wouldn't go that far. It's a good power meter. And if it's the first one you're going to have and it comes on your bike, you don't have to buy another external power meter and put it on and check for compatibility. It's just there on your bike, then you'll be fine. With the shortfalls obviously being no cycling dynamics, no torque effectiveness, pedal smoothness, the proprietary plug, and yes, it's still that Shimano power meter that we did see in the data there that was okay, still suffered from that right side issue just a little bit. But for watts, cadence, and a crank set on your bike off the shelf, it's the kind of solution that makes power meter companies a little nervous. If bikes start shipping with power meters, there's no reason for people to go out and buy another solution from a third party. I'm very interested to see the next move by Shimano in the power meter space. We see SRAM at the moment owning Quark and PowerTap, two big players in the power meter market. Shimano are gonna have to do something here to pivot because it's giant themselves who are taking these Shimano cranksets, making them power meters and putting them on bikes on the shop floor. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. If you own one of these, let us know how your experience has gone to date and make sure you do your firmware updates. Alrighty, thanks for watching and hit subscribe to support this channel. It's much appreciated.